Despite the OKC Thunder being a very young team that lacks collective experience in the postseason, the reality is, it's gonna be hard to put a cap on what this team can accomplish in the playoffs. They have a superstar and legitimate MVP contender in Shea Gilgis Alexander, they have a second year player who's putting up borderline all-star numbers in Jalen Williams, they got rookie Chad Holmgren, whose impact to this team has been literally historical, and they also got third year man Josh Giddy, who's still continuing to expand his skill set as a 6'8 guard wing hybrid. But the thing is, in an ideal playoff setting wherein rotations are trimmed down and when buckets are harder to come by, the determining factor for whether or not this team can go deep in the postseason might have to come from somewhere else. Basically, the Thunder's championship odds could actually hinge on the impact of their role players, particularly that of 6'4 guard Isaiah Joe, a former second round pick by the Philadelphia 76ers, who over the past one and a half seasons has evolved into one of the most impactful role players in the entire NBA for OKC. After being waived by Philadelphia in the summer of 2022, the Thunder signed Joe to a three-year deal worth just under $6 million. And with how he's been playing over the past two years, not only is Joe's contract looking like a massive steal, but Joe himself is also starting to look like one of the best free agent signings in OKC Thunder history. Well, at first glance, Joe's numbers are nothing special as they would reflect what a typical role player would actually produce. In less than 19 minutes per game, he's averaging just more than 8 points, more than 2 rebounds, and one assist. However, when you dive a little deeper, it's when you'll see just how mind-blowing his impact has been for OKC. Well, for sure, the Thunder already have the third best offensive rating and the second best net rating in the NBA right now. But when Isaiah Joe is on the floor, the team's offense spikes up even further to 126.5 points per 100 possessions, while their net rating also skyrockets to plus 14.8, both of which would actually rank first in the entire NBA. Well, I'm not saying that Isaiah Joe is an all-star level talent, but in this video, let's dive deeper into how OKC has been maximizing Isaiah Joe's skill set and why he could become the team's biggest X-Factor come playoff time. Let's get to it. The moment Isaiah Joe checks into the game for OKC, he immediately looks to fire away from the three-point line. Rightfully so, not only is Joe a high-volume three-point shooter who ranks second in three-point attempts among OKC's roster behind Lou Dort with almost five attempts per game, but Joe is also very accurate, as his current 42.6% mark from the three-point line is actually the 14th best in the entire NBA among all 204 players to attempt at least 100 three-point shots this season. As a predominantly catch-and-shoot scorer, Isaiah Joe's sweet shooting stroke and quick trigger from deep has just been a perfect fit with OKC's downhill attack-based offensive system. As it currently stands, the Thunder ranked first in the entire NBA in drives per game by a pretty wide margin, averaging 7 drives per game more than the second-place team which is the Indiana Pacers. And this comes as no surprise as Shea Gilgis Alexander is the most frequent driver in the entire NBA, while OKC's two other secondary ball handlers in J-Dub and Josh Giddy are also most effective when they are able to attack the paint. This is when Isaiah Joe's game comes into the equation. Whenever he's on the floor, his shooting threat from the perimeter alone opens up driving lanes for his teammates, while at the same time, he's always ready to be a release valve and a kick-out option whenever the defense collapses on OKC's drivers. However, the thing is, asking Joe to simply spot up from the perimeter would be a waste of his skill set. So instead of asking him to just stand around the corner and to wait for a kick-out pass, Coach Dagnalt has actually been maximizing Joe's minutes by using him both as a screener and as a movement shooter, which makes half-court actions involving him very hard to defend for opposing teams. In this play, you can see Shea as the ball handler with Isaiah Joe running a ghost screen. Instead of making actual contact with Kaminga, Joe slips right into the three-point line. Then you can see Shea's gravity forcing the entire Warriors defense to collapse in the paint, leaving Joe as an easy target for the kickout as he makes Kaminga pay by hitting the three-pointer. Then again here, with Giddy as the ball handler, you can see Joe approaching and setting a ghost screen, while Moses Moody is still right in front of him preventing Joe from receiving a pass from Giddy, but then Chet Holmgren sets a flare screen to free up Joe, giving him just enough daylight to drain the three-pointer plus the foul against two defenders. But also, the good thing about Joe is that even in those times when he isn't directly involved in an on-ball action, he's constantly analyzing the floor and relocating to advantageous positions to be able to free himself up from the perimeter. A lot of times, you'd actually see him hanging around the paint only to sprint out to the three-point line once a teammate starts to attack. This action basically forces Joe's defender to either help on the driving player or to defend him from behind the arc. 
In this play, you can see Joe trying to run a handoff play with Jay Will. Donovan Mitchell denies Joe quite well, so Jay Will passes the ball to Dort instead. But as Dort prepares to drive, you can see Joe in the paint sprinting out to the corners. Mitchell is frozen, not knowing who to defend, enabling Dort to make the short kick out to Joe, who drains the wide open three against the late closeout. Then in this play, you can see OKC running a Spain pick and roll with J Dub initiating the offense. Kaysen Wallace sets a ball screen while Joe flares out behind the arc. Now with the threat of J Dub driving game, Jaime Jaquez now has to pick his poison. He makes the mistake of giving Joe this much daylight as he drains the deep three-pointer. Well, being an elite three-point shooter is definitely good, but the problem is, if it's the only weapon you have in your arsenal, modern-day switching NBA defenses should still be able to neutralize your impact, especially in the playoffs. The good thing about Isaiah Joe is that he's worked hard to turn himself into more than just a sharp shooter. When quick and lengthy defenders close out on his outside shot, Joe is able to put the ball on the floor, create his own driving lane, and manufacture his own shot, whether it be at the rim or from the mid-range. Plus, Joe is also a pretty solid decision maker with the ball in his hands, who can make quick hitting passes when defenses try to trap him. Basically, it's safe to say that Joe has ways to fight all sorts of tactics that defenses might deploy against him in the postseason. In this possession, you can see Shea making the skip pass to Kaysen Wallace on the weak side who swings the ball to Isaiah Joe. DeJounte Murray is quick to close out, but Joe easily blows by him before attacking the open lane and showing off his bounds as he finishes the tough shot against Okongwu. This time, you can see Joe flaring out to the three-point line and receiving the rack from J-Dub. He already blows by D'Angelo Russell, but just watch how patient he is, going for the sidestep to get a cleaner shot as he drains the mid-range jumper. Then in this play, Dort finds Joe in the perimeter and facing a lengthy defender in Jaden McDaniels, Joe is able to drive into the paint. But seeing a mismatch under the basket, he lures his defender in before making the smart drop-off pass to Chet Holmgren who scores right at the rim. Well, with his gravity as a floor spacer, together with all the other things that it opens up for his teammates, I think there's definitely a case for Isaiah Joe being part of a ton of closing lineups for OKC in the playoffs, especially during highly contested close games. Though the only potential potential problem with him being a consistent part of those closing lineups is how he would fare on the defensive end of the floor. Well, don't get me wrong, Isaiah Joe is an incredibly willing defender for a guard, but depending on who you ask, Joe stands at only around 6 foot 3 or 6 foot 4. He's not nearly as bulky as someone like Lou Dort and he's not nearly as big as Josh Giddy either. And the thing is, historically, players of his build typically get targeted by opposing ball handlers in the postseason. So I think the only question here will be, can Joe actually do an enough on the defensive end for him to stay on the floor so that the Thunder can reap the benefits that his offensive game brings. But the good thing is, Isaiah Joe is still a much better defender than a lot of players from his archetype, such as guys like Seth Curry or Duncan Robinson, who actually share similar roles with Joe on their respective teams. Overall, on defense, Joe has solid lateral movement, he's got quick instincts, and he's also very scrappy. In fact, this season, Joe ranks 6th in the entire NBA in charges drawn per game and 7th in charges drawn per 36 minutes. But most specially, I love that although he's not as elite as Dort or Shea or even even Kaysen Wallace on defense, Joe actually knows how to deploy his quick hands in order to take advantage of the pressure created by OKC's main point of attack defenders. In this possession, OKC plays zone and you can see LeBron being guarded by Shea while Joe guards Austin Reeves on the wing, but as LeBron drives, you can see Joe with an instinctive help defense as he forces the turnover for the Lakers. Then here in semi-transition, you can see Joe actually picking up Shake Milton and walling him off from attacking the lane. Milton is forced to give up the ball, but then watch Joe straight up stripping the ball away from Carl Anthony Towns, causing OKC to regain possession. Well, up to this point of the season, Isaiah Joe has been playing the most efficient and the most impactful basketball of his young career, but more importantly, it also helps that his game appears to be a tailor-made fit with that of Shea Gilgis Alexander. As per PBP stats dating back to last season, the Thunder have produced a plus 11.3 net rating in the more than 1,400 minutes that Joe and SGA have shared the floor together. That's way higher than SGA's net rating with either one of J-Dub, Josh Giddy, or even Lou Dort within that span of time. Well, for sure, only time will tell how Coach Dagnalt will get the best out of him come playoff time, but it's starting to look like Isaiah Joe may end up being the difference between the Thunder being just plain overachievers and them being actual big winners in the postseason.
So thank you guys if you've actually made it this far into the video and if you've actually enjoyed this one, please do me a favor by hitting that like button. It only takes a second of your time but it will be much appreciated. But also, do you think Isaiah Joe could really become that X factor for OKC this coming postseason? Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section below and again if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as well. Again, this has been Real Balls and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.